In previous chapters, we have seen how the exchange rate is affected by several factors of which relative inflation rate and relative interest rates are considered to have significant effect on the exchange rate. In this chapter, we will study the theories of exchange rate which attempts to quantify the relationship between the exchange rate, inflation rate and the interest rate. These theories are based on the asset market approach as studied in the last chapter and explains how the changes in money market affects the exchange rates and interest rates. After studying this module, you shall be able to know the relation between inflation, interest rates and exchange rates, learn the purchasing power parity theory and its implications, identify different theories of exchange rate determination, evaluate the validity of PPP in the long run and analyze how the exchange rates changes over time. Let us now begin our discussion on purchasing power parity. The origins of purchasing power parity that is PPP theory can be traced back to the World War I when the international trade system was disrupted and an alternative to gold standard was sought till the adjustments were done. It was introduced by Gustav Castle in 1918 to correct for the large differential in inflation rates experienced by the countries after the war ended. The theory of PPP states that exchange rate between two countries is determined on the basis of the ratio of the two countries price levels of a fixed basket of goods and services. The equilibrium is attained when the purchasing power is same in both the countries. So, when a country's price level increases, its goods become expensive, exports decline and imports rises, which together creates a downward pressure on the currency and hence the currency depreciates till it reaches back in equilibrium. The concept of same purchasing power in the two countries is based on the law of one price. We will understand the law in detail in the next section. The law of one price. The law of one price states that the identical goods should hold the same price in all the countries when expressed in the same currency given there are no transportation cost, no barriers to trade and markets are competitive. For example, if a good X is sold for rupees 50 in India and the same good is sold for $1 in US, then the dollar by rupee exchange rate should be rupees 50 per dollar. Suppose if the dollar per rupees exchange rate reduced to 45 rupees per dollar, then one could buy good X cheap from India at rupees 45 and sell it for $1 in US and then converting that dollar into rupees will yield him rupees 50 thus a gain of rupees 5. This will induce the person to buy cheap from India and sell it to US. This will push up the price in India as demand increases and push down the price in US until the prices get equalized in both the places. An increase in exchange rate to say 55 rupees per dollar will create an upward pressure on the currency to appreciate to bring the prices back in equilibrium. It is noted that the law of one price holds only if trade is costless among the nations. The law can be restated in general terms as follows. Let P be the price of good A in home country and P star be the price of good A in foreign country. Then the exchange rate between nations that is capital E is nothing but the ratio of price of good A in home and foreign currencies. Therefore, 
capital E will be equals to P A divided by P star A. The equation defined for a single good can be extended to a fixed basket of goods and services to arrive at PPP theory. PPP theory is defined for general price level and hence stated as E is equals to P by P star for all the goods. Versions of PPP theory There are two versions of PPP theory absolute PPP and relative PPP. We will discuss both in detail. First is absolute PPP. The absolute form of PPP indicates that the price of a fixed basket of goods and services will be equal in different nations when priced in one currency. The above equation holds for absolute PPP where the exchange rate is determined by the ratio of price level in two countries that is capital E is equals to P by P star. Capital E is the spot exchange rate and P and P star are the general price levels in the home and the foreign nations respectively. As discussed in the last section, any deviation from the equilibrium exchange rate will necessitate arbitrage process which will equalize the prices in the two nations. Problems with absolute PPP First, taste and consumption differ across countries. Then absolute PPP may not be appropriate to compare the price levels in two countries as consumption basket differs across nations. Second, exchange rate can change due to non-price economic events which can lead to deviations in PPP even if price remains constant. Third, it assumes that all the goods are traded internationally but there are various non-traded goods which do not enter the international trade. Hence, as price of non-traded goods change, prices also change but exchange rate may not vary. Fourth, Absolute PPP is valid only if there are no transportation cost, no information cost and trade barriers such as tariffs and quotas and non-trade barriers do not exist. Such assumptions do not hold true in real world and thus relative form of PPP is studied which accounts for such imperfections. So relative PPP holds even if absolute PPP may not. Second is relative PPP. The relative form of PPP accounts for imperfections not considered by the absolute PPP. Since market imperfections occur, the prices of goods are not equalized in the two nations. Rather, the rate of change in prices of a basket of goods should be similar in both nations. The change in exchange rate is equal to the relative change in price levels in the two nations over a period of time. Since we talk about change, relative PPP is defined over a period of time. ET minus ET minus 1 is equals to pi 1 comma t minus pi 2 comma t where pi refers to the inflation rate that is change in price level in inflation in nation 1 and nation 2. For example, assume nation 1's inflation rate for current period is 10% whereas nation 2's inflation rate is 7%. Substituting the figures in the equation, PPP theory suggests that nation 2's currency should appreciate by 3% equal to the difference in inflation rates. The exchange rate changes set off the inflation rate differential such that the prices of the goods appear same in the both countries. The relative purchasing power will be the same in both countries for the goods. Relative PPP is nothing but a more dynamic and flexible version of absolute PPP. 
Let us now discuss the derivation of PPP. Let P1 and P2 be the price indexes of the two nation 1 and 2 respectively. Over time, as they experience inflation, price index changes to P1 into 1 plus pi 1 and P2 into 1 plus pi 2 respectively. According to PPP theory, as inflation rate changes, the differences in inflation rate gets reflected in exchange rate to equalize the prices in two nations. Nation 2's price index from the point of view of nation 1's consumer becomes P1 into 1 plus pi 1 into 1 plus E2, where E2 represents the percentage change in the value of the nation's two currency. E2 changes so as to maintain parity in the price indexes of the two countries. Since price index of nation 2 get equalized to nation 1, we can write the equation as follows. P2 into 1 plus pi 2 into 1 plus E2 is equals to P1 into 1 plus pi 1. Solving this, we get E2 is equals to P1 into 1 plus pi 1 by P2 into 1 plus pi 2 minus 1. Initially, P1 and P2 are equal and hence E2 is equals to 1 plus pi 1 by 1 plus pi 2 minus 1. If pi 1 is greater than pi 2, then E2 should be positive, which implies nation 2's currency will appreciate by the inflation rate differential between the two nations. However, if pi 1 is smaller than pi 2, then nation's 2 currency will depreciate to equalize the purchasing power. Sometimes the relation between inflation and exchange rates is simplified to minus E2 which is equivalent to pi 1 minus pi 2. This relationship is used only when the inflation differential is small or pi 2 is close to 0. Let us now discuss the limitations of PPP. The PPP theory does not work well in the long run and hence relative prices are not equalized in all the countries. First, market imperfections. The law of one price assumes that there are no transportation cost, no information cost and no restriction on trade. This allows arbitrage in commodities and hence prices tends to get equalized. However, in the real world, transport cost and trade barriers do exist, which makes it expensive to move a good from one place to another. Second, presence of non-tradable goods and services. A non-tradable good is one which is not traded across the borders due to the high transportation cost. For example, haircuts, housing services, etc. are classified as non-tradable goods and services whose prices are determined entirely on the basis of domestic demand and supply. Few services like financial services are easily tradable across borders through internet. Hence, a rise in the price of tradable good in the basket of goods and services will raise the price relative to the foreign basket of goods and services. A rise in price will reduce its purchasing power. Presence of such non-tradable goods weaken the law of one price further. Third, substitutability of traded goods. If price of a good rises in one nation, consumers shift their purchases from the nation which sells it cheap. But if the substitutes of goods are not available, then consumers will have no option but to continue their purchases at higher price. This will reduce their purchasing power in one country as compared to the other nation. Fourth, other effects. PPP theory states that exchange rate movements are determined by the difference in inflation rate between the two nations. But exchange rate gets influenced by other factors such as interest rate differentials, income differentials and other policy factors. 
the effect of other factors weaken the link between inflation differential and exchange rate. Moving on to discuss the international fissure effect theory. Another major theory of exchange rate determination is the international fissure effect theory or simply known as fissure theory. Similar to purchasing power parity theory, it makes use of interest rate differentials rather than inflation differentials to determine the exchange rate. The changes in interest rates are however reflected in inflation differences because of the close relationship between the two. It was developed by Irving Fisher in 1930. Relationship with purchasing power parity. Purchasing power parity theory says that exchange rate movements are determined by inflation differentials. International Fisher theory says that exchange rate movements are guided by the inflation differentials. The two theories are closely related due to the Fisher effect which links the interest rate and inflation in the following manner. Fisher theorem states that 1 plus i is equal to 1 plus r star into 1 plus pi or approximately i is equal to r star plus pi and r star is equal to i minus pi. Fisher theory suggests that high interest rates will lead to high inflation rates. Hence, IFE theory predicts that the country with high interest rate will see its exchange rate depreciating to equalize the returns in two countries. IFE theory disregards the usual notion which suggests that investors will invest in the country with higher interest rates and this will put an upward pressure on the currency to appreciate. Let us discuss the derivation of IFE. The return on domestic security is simply the interest offered on the securities but the return earned on foreign securities is the interest offered on foreign security and change in the value of currency during the investment period which affects the total return on security. The actual or effective return on foreign deposit or deposit in nation 2 becomes r is equals to 1 plus i2 into 1 plus e2 minus 1. The return on home deposit by deposit in nation 1 b minus r is equals to i1. Since the returns gets equalized 1 plus i2 into 1 plus e2 minus 1 is equals to i1 that is 1 plus i2 into 1 plus e2 is equals to 1 plus i1 which means 1 plus e2 is equals to 1 plus i1 divided by 1 plus i2 and e2 is equals to 1 plus i1 by 1 plus i2 minus 1. According to the formula when i1 is greater than i2 e2 will be positive that is as interest rate in the home country rises foreign currency will appreciate to improve the return on foreign deposits. The simple formula can be used as approximation when the interest rate differential is small. E2 is equals to I1 minus I2. We can say that a country with high interest rate will always have a high inflation rate and that leads to the appreciation of the currency. Next we will understand the limitations of IFE. IFE based on purchasing power parity theory takes into account all the factors affecting the purchasing power in the long run and hence IFE theory fails to hold two in the long run. Let us now recapitulate or summarize what we have learnt in this module. Exchange rate is affected by several factors of which relative inflation rates and relative interest rates are considered to have significant effect on the exchange rate. The theory of PPP states that exchange rate between two countries is determined on the basis of the ratio of the two countries price level of a fixed basket of goods and services. The equilibrium is attained when the purchasing power is same in both the countries. 
it was introduced by Gustav Cassel in 1918 to correct for the large differential in inflation rates experienced by the countries after the war ended. The law of one price states that identical goods should hold the same price in all the countries when expressed in the same currency given there are no transportation cost, no barriers to trade and markets are competitive. The absolute form of PPP states that price of a fixed basket of goods and services will be equal in different nations when priced in one currency. The relative form of PPP accounts for imperfections not considered by the absolute PPP and rate of change in prices of a basket of goods should be similar in both nations. The PPP theory does not work well in the long run and hence relative prices are not equalized in all the countries. International Fisher's Effect theory makes use of the interest rate differentials rather than the inflation differentials to determine the exchange rate. IFE theory predicts that the country with high interest rate will see its exchange rate depreciating to equalize the returns in two countries.